to worship. Please stand and join us as we face the cross. choir. You can be seated. Congregation, if you would remain standing for a moment. Good morning and welcome to Palm Sunday here at Lake Park Lutheran Church. My name is Pastor Alyssa and it's a joy to welcome you. If you are visiting today, a special welcome to you. If you at any point need help or assistance, just lean over to the person next to you. We're all pretty friendly here and say, can you help me out? Um, I'm sure someone would be willing to help you. And uh, parents with kiddos, just a reminder that children are always welcome in worship. We delight in their presence. But if you're looking for a safe uh, place for them to play or rest, we do have our nursery with our nursery attendant, Eliana, just through these doors. Today in our service, we begin by remembering Jesus' triumphant entrance into Jerusalem, riding a donkey. We had a donkey here this morning, and we had a lot of fun meeting Truffles the donkey. We'll, um, in our service, wave palms and process around the sanctuary as we remember him coming into Jerusalem. We'll be blessed with special music from our musicians and our choir. We'll hear the story of Jesus' last day in today's service. And we will read the story all the way up through Jesus' crucifixion. I invite you to settle into worship now as the Spirit of God surrounds us. Let us begin. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. You can be seated now as we hear the story of Jesus' entrance into Jerusalem. From Mark chapter 11, verses 1 through 11. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Just say this, The Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door, 
outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. I invite our children to come up as we get ready for our palm procession. So kiddos, come on up and bring a palm if you have one. Come on up. So when Jesus entered Jerusalem, yeah, we can sit for a second. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, a crowd was following Jesus. They took to the streets. They were saying, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. It was kind of like a parade. Have you ever been in a parade or seen a parade? Yeah. Yeah. But their excitement and support was risky. It was a little different than just a parade. It was almost more like a protest because Jesus opposed the people who were in power and he stood against the empire. Jesus was bringing down the powerful, remember? And he was lifting up the lowly and the oppressed, creating a pathway of love and inclusion and freedom for all. So today, we're going to join in the procession, okay? The parade, the protest, and we're going to get a chance to wave our palms just like they did too. But we need your help. We need this to be really fun and loud and noisy. So Lori found me some pretty cool instruments. We need you to grab an instrument. I still have a coloring thing. And you've got your coloring thing perfect. So you can wave your coloring thing or your palm and then help me make music. And we're going to process around the sanctuary. If you need help writing these words, I can help this crayon. Oh, thank you. Good. I might need some edits. It's from a box movie one. That's perfect. Thank you for bringing it up. I love it. Okay, we're going to practice saying a couple words, and then we're going to start on our palm parade. So you want to stand up? Congregation, will you stand up with me? I don't know. I, don't know. I, I need my instrument. What, you need your, oh, yeah, grab an instrument. So when I say, blessed is the one who came, comes in the name of the Lord, I need you to respond, Hosanna to the son of David. Can we do that? Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna to the son of David. Let's try it again. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna to the Son of David. I think we got it. All right, we're going to sing a little song as we go on our parade. So musicians, choir, can you help us out? And everyone's welcome to join the parade around the sanctuary. Thank you. 
parade, you can put your musical instruments back in the basket. Did you? They're cool. You did a great job with those. Thank you so much for coming up. Thank you, thank you. Could you help her get to the nursery? You can be seated. If you aren't already, you're all already seated. I'm out of breath. <laughs> Let us pray. Almighty God, in your expansive love, you sent Jesus to walk among us on this earth. Help us to join in, in the procession of all who sing Christ's glory. Prepare us now to receive the story of Jesus' last days. Amen.
people were so joyful to welcome Jesus to Jerusalem. They were saying, Hosanna in the highest. But it didn't take long until their shouts of praise turned to shouts of hatred and accusation. Over the next couple of days, Jesus would be betrayed by his closest supporters, sent to trial, and then crucified. Listen now as we hear the story of what happened next, according to the Gospel of Mark. It was two days before Pentecost and the festival of the unleavened bread. The chief priests and scribes were looking for a way to arrest Jesus by stealth and to kill him. And they said, not during the festival, or there may be a riot among the people. When it was evening, he came with the twelve, and when they had taken their places, they were eating. Jesus said, truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me one who is eating with me. And they began to be very distressed and said to him one after another, surely not I. He said to them, it is one of the 12, one who is dipping bread into the bowl with me. For the son of man goes as it was written of him, but woe to the one by whom the son of man is betrayed it would have been better for that one not to have been born. While they were eating, he took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it and gave it to them and said, Take, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, and all of them drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I tell you, I will never again drink of the fruit of this vine until the day when I drink it, it new in the kingdom of God. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives, and Jesus said to them, You will all fall away, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered. But after I'm raised up, I'll go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, even though all fall away, I will not. Jesus said to him, truly I tell you this day, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he said vehemently, even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all of them said the same. They took Jesus to the high priest, and all of the chief priests, the elders, and the scribes were assembled. Peter had followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest, and he was sitting with the guards, warming himself at the fire. 
Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none. For many gave false testimony against him, and their testimony did not agree. Some stood up and gave false testimony against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another not made with hands. But even on this point, their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But he was silent and did not answer. Again, the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? Jesus said, I am, and you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, Why do we still need witnesses? You have heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? All of them condemned him as deserving death. Some began to spit on him, to blindfold him, and to strike him, saying to him, Prophecy. The guards also took him and beat him. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the female servants of the high priest came by. When she saw Peter warming himself, she stared at him and said, You also were with Jesus, the man from Nazareth. But he denied it, saying, I do not know or understand what you are talking about. And he went out into the forecourt. Then the cock crowed. And the female servant, on seeing him, began again to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. But again he denied it. Then after a little while the bystanders again said to Peter, Certainly you are one of them, for you are a Galilean, and you talk like one. But he began to curse, and he swore an oath, I do not know this man you are talking about. At that moment, the cock crowed for the second time. Then Peter remembered that Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered him, You say so. Then the chief priests accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival, he used to release a prisoner for them, anyone for whom they asked. Now a man called Barabbas was in prison with the insurrectionists who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. Then he answered them, do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priest had handed him over. But the chief priest stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again. Then what do you wish me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, crucify him. Pilate asked them, why? What evil has he done? But they, all sh but they shouted all the more, crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters, and they called together the whole cohort. And they clothed him in a purple cloak, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on him. And they began saluting him, Hail, King of the Jews. They struck his head with a reed, spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him, they stripped him of the purple cloak and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him.
I invite you to stand as we hear the crucifixion of Jesus and the story of the passion of our Lord. They compelled a passerby who was coming from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Then they brought Jesus to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, the king of the Jews. And with him, they crucified two rebels, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him and shaking their heads and saying, ah, you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also among the scribes were mocking him among themselves and saying, he saved others, he cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down from the cross now so that we can see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also taunted him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sambachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard this, listen, he's calling for Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick and gave it up to him, saying, hey, wait to see if whether Elijah will come and take him down. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain in the temple was torn into two from top to bottom. Now when the centurion who stood facing him saw that this way he breathed his last, he said, truly, this man was God's son. Please sit or kneel.
trusting in God's promise to reconcile all things. Let us pray for the church, the well-being of creation, and a world in need. Blessed one, today the church sings glad hosannas as we enter Holy Week. Prepare us to bear witness to Christ's suffering and death endured for our sake. Unite us with Christians all over the globe who celebrate and remember this week. Gather your people across the cross and comfort us with resurrection hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of the whole world, establish peace and justice among the nations. We pray especially for peace in Ukraine, Moscow, Palestine. We pray too for Haiti as they experience horrible instability, violence, and fear. Hold to account all with authority to judge others. Grant that courts, legislatures, and local governments find ways to usher in stability, humanitarian aid, and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of the oppressed, bring hope to any who feel forsaken or forgotten. Those who have been abandoned, those who are unfairly accused of crimes, and all who are incarcerated. Bring comfort to those who are seeking refuge and asylum, and grant healing to those who are hurting in mind, body, or spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Now we pray especially for those connected to this community who need our care. For Karen, for Tira as she faces medical challenges, for John and Roger, for our members at home today and those worshiping online, including Melanie, Wendy and Mike, Scott, Rich and Sue, Laverne, Sherry and Richard, Laura and Scott. For whom and for what else do we pray? Lord, in your mercy. Hear now our silent prayers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of the faithful, we give thanks for the courage of all those who have lived revolutionary lives, fighting for justice for the oppressed and suffering at the hands of the powerful. We give thanks especially for Oscar Arnulfo Romero, Bishop and Martyr, whom the Church commemorates today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Accompany us on our journey, God of grace, and receive the prayers of our hearts through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Now may the peace of Christ be with you all. I invite you to shine a, share a sign of peace with one another and get to know your neighbor.
invite you to stand for Holy Communion. Good and gracious God, thank you for the gifts that you have shared with us, which we now return to you in hopes that you might transform them for the goodness of the world. Amen. God, you meet us at this table, um, and you say those words when you were gathered with your friends, and we're reminded of just how fearful of a time it must have been for the disciples as they walked with Jesus in those last days. So gather around us as we hear these stories of our faith, as we're reminded of your betrayal, God, of your crucifixion, but also of your love poured out for us in this meal. Bless us now as we remember. The Lord be with you. And also, lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Let us remember now the night in which Jesus was betrayed when he was with the disciples. When he took bread, blessed it, and broke it, giving it to them to eat, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, Jesus took the cup, blessed it, and poured it out for all to drink, saying, Take and drink. This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Take and drink. Do this in remembrance of me. So now gathered together by the Holy Spirit, we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. I invite you to pray along with me the Lord's Prayer in whatever version or language is closest to your heart. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. These are the gifts of our God poured out for all, and so all are welcome at this table. The feast is ready, the table is set, and you are very welcome. You may be seated, and our ushers will help you find your way to the front. The red liquid is wine and the other is juice. If you need a gluten-free wafer, let us know. We'll help you find that as well. Come, let's eat.
Now may this body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen us and keep us in God's peace. Amen. I have a couple of announcements to share with you. First of all, thank you everyone for coming out on this snowy day to be together for Palm Sunday as we begin our journey into Holy Week. Um, the days ahead, we will continue to hear the story of Jesus' last days. You heard some of it today, um, which we do intentionally so that those who aren't able to join us throughout the week still get to hear the full narrative. But we hope you might join us throughout this week, Monday, Thursday, for our joint service at Cross Lutheran Church, um, Good Friday for a service here with powerful reflections from three of our members and musical reflections from many of you. Um, the Easter Vigil on Saturday night, beginning at 7 outside, really fun service where we walk around a lot and sing and dance and shake things and it's a good time. Um, so uh, that's a really fun one. And then of course Easter Sunday, we'll gather um, in Lake Park uh, at uh, 7.30 for our sunrise service. Um, and then come back here for our Easter egg hunt. So kids, we need you to come and bring your Easter basket or a bag of some sort. Um, and then at 10 o'clock, we'll join in here and online for our festive Easter celebration. So we hope that you might be able to join us for those services. Please check out your bulletin that has the full schedule in the front there of the cover. A couple other things, thank you to those who were able to attend um, a couple of really powerful events on Thursday evening. The MICA Health Summit was uh, a beautiful and powerful example of community coming together to advocate for health services on the north side of our city. So thank you for those of you who were able to be at that. And then um, also thanks for those who were able to show up to the Iftar dinner um, at uh, the Islamic Community Center as we stood in solidarity and community with our Muslim friends um, over there. We had 10 people from Lake Park show up and so it was really, really cool. Um, so thank you for being a part of that. Of course, we continue to hold the people of Palestine, especially in this holy time, in this holy week, in our hearts. Um, if you don't know, uh, people celebrate, obviously, Holy Week all around the world, and in Palestine, especially in the Holy Land, they have some really, really beautiful celebrations and services, which are um, covered with a tone of, of somber, you know, prayerful solace this year. But uh, if you are interested in looking into the way that they honor these traditions, um, you can find services online from Bethlehem Lutheran Church uh, in, in Palestine, which would be pretty cool to watch, so we'll send the link for you to uh, follow along with those. Let's see, what else? Mainly just we hope to see you this week, so please show up um, and be around if you can. If you'd like to play a part in one of the services, um, helping to wash feet or to, that sounds weird if you don't know what I'm talking about. In our Monday, Thursday service, we have a tradition of washing feet as we remember the way in which Jesus washed the disciples' feet. If you'd like to help wash feet, be one of our foot washers, be a reader, um, help serve communion, we're always looking for more people to help out, especially this week. So uh, feel free to let me know or Stefan if you're interested in having a role. Okay, I think that's all I have. So let's stand as we sing one of our favorite songs that reminds us of just how much this world is about to turn with Jesus' death and resurrection. 723 in your red hymnal, there is a typo, 723.
meets you on the way. Thanks be to God.